time I spent in prison did it. My name's Taylor Ruff. Um, I'm a rapper from Melbourne. Most people know me as Flo's De Leone. So I'm from Newport, but I mean, when you're from the western suburbs of Melbourne, like, you don't just stick to one suburb, you know? Like, it's, it's not like other cities in that where you used to stick to your postcode, you know? So um, I'm from Newport, but I've lived all over the western suburbs, bro, you know? I used to live with my ex in Werribee, and Newport's not a bad place, bro, honestly, man. Especially now, man. Like, you won't find a house under a million bucks in Newport. But yeah, growing up, bro, like, before the real estate boom and they knocked down all the old houses and did all the renos, it was a pretty bad place, bro, you know? This is 15 years ago when I was in high school. A um, lot of housing commission, bro. A lot of um, very multicultural. A um, lot of Sudanese, mainly Lebanese. Altona North, Newport. Um, but yeah, bro, like it's, it's actually, a, it's a nice place to live, you know? It's, it's the same as anywhere you go, bro. Like, you know, in Sydney, you've got these nice areas, same as Melbourne, and they're just like, got commission housing all throughout them. So you get that mix, bro, you know, like, you know, it's Newport's right by the bay, bro. It's a beautiful place, but at the same time, like, if you're from the western suburbs or you're from Newport, you know, bro, like, if, it depends what type of life you want to live. Like, if you want to live there and do the righty and, and stay out of trouble, like, you can, but if you want to get amongst it and, and go down the other path, like, there's plenty of opportunities to do that too, bro. So you're from the Housing Commissions of Newport? Yeah, bro. And what was growing up in the Housing Commissions like for you and your family? Uh, so it was me and my mum, uh, bro, that was just life, bro, like it was normal, you know, I didn't see anything, you know, what it, you know what I mean, bro, like when you, when you grow up in that, like it's, you don't know that it's like any different to anywhere else, you know, that was just home, lad, um, so yeah, bro, it wasn't until I got older and shit and I'm like, fuck, like, there's a better way to live, you know, there's, there's, there's a nicer way to live, but as a kid, bro, yeah, you know, ignorance is bliss, lad. That was just home. Yeah, so my childhood was, you know, it wasn't terrible, bruh. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of boys that have been, had, had rougher upbringings than me. I was raised by a single mum. Um, I've, I've lived with my dad for a few years when I was younger, uh, but I was getting into too much trouble, so my mum brought me back with her. But yeah, bruh, I mean, same as anyone, I guess. You have your ups and your downs, lad. Single mum trying to raise me. Um, yeah, she had, you know, multiple boyfriends over the years and that caused a lot of shit, bro. Like, you know, cause I, I'd never accept anyone else as my dad. And, you know, like mum wasn't trying to make him be like my dad, you know, but like I had these authority male figures in my life that I didn't respect or even know properly. You know what I mean, bro? Um, my childhood, bro, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not from Brighton or nothing, lad, but, you know, I'm definitely, like, my mum's a good woman, you know, and she worked two jobs to put a roof over me head. Um, yeah, we missed dinners some nights, bro, but as I said before, bro, that was normal for me, you know, like, and the cunts I was hanging out with, bro, that was normal, so I didn't really see it as, like, a bad thing, you know. Uh, it wasn't until I got older and shit, I was like, fuck, you know, like, yeah, we, we used to struggle bad, you know. Um, but, yeah, overall, bro, like, you know, I, I've never copped any sexual abuse from from family members or all that like other other boys have you know um but yeah growing up probably the hardest bit in the childhood was like physical abuse from my stepfather but yeah bro you know like as i said bro like growing up that was just because it happened all the time and it was happening to everyone around me you don't think it's it's as bad as what it is you know what i mean yeah and do you remember the first time getting in trouble with the law bro like so yeah, man, so like, I was getting in trouble for like, thieving cars and shoplifting and punching on and stuff like that from an early age. But my first proper, my first proper charge was against my stepfather. Um, they charged me with intentionally cause, or recklessly cause serious injury. Um, and that was the first time like I had to go to, like do a big court case and was facing juvie and stuff, but yeah, as I said, bro, that was against my stepfather, and yeah, because my mum left him, you know, my, he was he was physically abusive and sexually abusive to her, not to me, but after she left him, like, he was terrorising my mum for fucking, like, a good year, you know, um, and one day I caught him looking over the back fence, or he was just jumping our back fence, he'd been doing something in the backyard, and uh, I was with my younger brother, Riv, I was about 14, Riv was 11, 
And yeah, I jumped the back fence, bro, and me and Riv chased him down and chased him into a building site and fucking, we're talking about a 45 year old grown man too, who used to uh, dish out, you know, beatings on me. But when I got old enough to chase him and back him into a corner in this building site, it was funny as bro, like he picks up a plank of wood and he's screaming out for help to all the builders, you know, help me, help me, I'm being assaulted. It was just, it was just crazy, bro. Like this, this, this bloke that I was so scared of for so many years, you know. That's when I like the first time I'm like, fuck, you're a coward, you know. Because I could see the fear in his eyes, bro. And I was just a kid, you know. But yeah, fucking. So yeah, bro. That was my first, my first big charge. Um, and yeah, bro. Like after that, I mean, yeah, the charges just start racking up, lad. Heaps of petty shit, heaps of graffiti, assaults, weapons in public places, drugs. Fucking you name it, bro. Did you do any uh, time in juvenile detention? Nah, I didn't, bro. So I was lucky with, like, so the detectives on that case, like, you know, my mum, because my mum had an AVO on this cunt, you know? Uh, so they, like, they knew the story and that. And, like, I was just a kid, bro. We're talking about a 45-year-old man and I'm, I'm a young kid. So the, the prosecution, like, didn't really push it, you know? Like, I think they felt for me and my mum. They knew, like, our circumstances and that, so... I ended up just getting like a two year bond and I had to go do like rock climbing with the jacks and community service and shit. The rock climbing with the jacks was fucking whack as bro. Like I had to go to this indoor rock climbing center and bond with police, you know, uh, that was weird bro. But yeah, fortunately bro, no juvie. Um, but who knows bro, maybe juvie would have helped me out as a kid, you know, maybe scared me into the right path. But yeah, that never happened for me lads. So the abuse from my stepfather led me to my drug use from an early age. And the drug, the drug use led into crime, you know what I mean? Uh, but like all the shit with me stepdad, like that didn't make me want to go do crime. I just, I was using drugs to cope with it, you know? To cope with what I've seen. And because when you're a kid, like it hurts and shit and you're scared. But like, as I got older, I started thinking of it, thinking of, of it in more in depth and like the shit that I seen my mum go through and it, bro, to be honest, bro, it was more so what I saw happen to my mum that led to my drug use, you know, like the beatings and that that I copped and fucking, yeah, like I felt like I could handle that, bro, but seeing what happened to my mum, like what she endured for years, man, like fucking tore me up, bro, and I didn't know how to deal with that as a kid, you know, um, yeah, like I, I couldn't talk to anyone about it, like mum used to tell me not to tell anyone, so yeah, bro, I had no one to to, to vent these emotions to, and yeah, that led to my, my drug use, bro, again, which led into the crime and everything else that comes with it, man. Yeah, so basically just started off smoking chuf, you know what I mean? Um, smoking bongs, and which I did for fucking the next probably 13 years from when I started. And then, yeah, after that comes benzos, zannies, valiums, and then like, obviously as a kid, bro, like I was doing all the party drugs, you know? Getting on the pills, the coke, you know, trying acid, just trying everything. But later on down the track, it wasn't until I was in prison, bro, after, after my brother Betsy passed away and I was doing some counselling in prison. It really, like, you know, we were figuring some shit out and, and we came to the conclusion that, like, what happened with my stepdad, like, led to, like, where I am now, you know what I mean? Definitely, um... Because, yeah, as time went on, bro, I ended up getting on the ice, uh, the heroin and fucking... Yeah, bro, so, but my main, like, I, I've suffered with drug addiction, bro, like, hectic, you know, like, on the prescription pills, Seroquel, Zoloft, Xanax, Buds, and, and pretty much ice too, bro, like, I wasn't smoking ice every day, um, but every time I would smoke ice, like, it would be detrimental to my mental health, and, and I'd just fucking go off the rails, you know, like, I'd, I'd smoke ice, I'd be up for fucking seven days, bro. Um, so ice has been a fucking big part of my life, bro. Like, just not on a, not as much of a constant as everything else. But the times that I would be on the ice, bro, like, um, yeah, only bad shit would happen, man. When I went to prison, I got clean, you know. Um, I was in jail for three years and that, you know, silver lining type thing where I was able to get clean for the first time in my life since I was 13. I've only just got off parole, bro, two weeks ago. So up until two weeks ago, I've, I've been doing um, like two piss tests a week and I've been sober that whole time. So I had to learn how to deal with shit, um, like the death of my best mate, um, 
you know, my partner of eight years leaving me in prison. Like that was the first time I had to deal with heavy shit sober, you know? And um, to be honest, bro, like as much as like, because when you take drugs to deal with trauma and grief, all you're doing is blocking it out, you know? Um, which doesn't solve the problem. Like you just, you, you're pushing it to the side, but deep down it's there, you know? So even though in jail and that, and like I had to learn how to deal with these things sober and I had to feel the pain more and the grief more, it was actually beneficial, you know? Because I was allowing myself to grieve for the first time in my life during a traumatic experience. Like I wasn't blocking it out with drugs and I'm still off the drugs, bro. Like, you know, but, I, but once an addict, always an addict. Like it's not like... I'm off the drugs and it's all good, you know? Like, brother, I still have bad days where, like, I really, like, got to battle demons and, like, or when things are going bad for me, my brain reverts to, like, what it used to think, you know? If something went wrong in my life, oh, I'm going to go get a fucking ball. I'm going to smoke ice. I'm going to get on a bender and just fucking block it all out, you know? Um, but, yeah, I can't do that anymore, bro. But, yeah, as I said, you know, you do have to face your, your traumas, like, front on. But you need to do that to, to be able to move forward, bro, you know? Um, yeah, man, so I'm just so glad that I've... As I said, going to jail, bro, was fucking, you know, a traumatic experience for me and my family, but there were positives that I took out of it. And, and getting sober and coming out sober and learning how to deal with shit um, sober, yeah, that's, that's the silver lining in it all, bro. And how does sort of music help you with... You know, the drug addiction, your trauma, does it help you? It does, bro. So as I said to you earlier, bro, like growing up, I didn't have anyone to speak to about this sort of shit. I was getting beaten by my stepdad. I was watching shit happen to my mum. I was also going through my own mental demons, you know, like I've always suffered with mental illness, bro, depression, um, bipolar, um, PTSD. Um, and music for me, bro, in the early days was like my first ever way to express what I was feeling, you know? And um, that's how like my whole journey started in music, bro. Like, you know, I'm, I'm talking way before Facebook and, and YouTube even, bro. Like, there was no motivation at all to like want to rap to make it big or to get views or to make money. Like for me, bro, it was just like I had a pad and a pen. And um, yeah, bro, like I, I was able to get shit off my chest for the first time. It's been, you know, so therapeutic, bro. And it still is to this day. Whether I'm rapping about, um, you know, shit that I'm going through, you know, hard sort of shit or like even the good times, bro, like it's, it's music's been so, you know, detrimental in my like mental health, you know what I mean? And, and bettering myself, bro. Yeah, music's massive, bro. Like, and that's why, you know, yeah, I don't know, bro. But yeah, music for me, cuz like really, it keeps me on the straight and narrow and it gives me that outlet, you know? I've got plenty of people now I can speak to about shit. I've got, I got a big support network, but there's something when you're in, like when you're in your room alone with like your pad and your pen or your iPhone writing lyrics, like it's just you, you know, in the rawest form. Like you don't have any judgment. You're not trying to explain something to someone you think they might not understand. So yeah, man, music's been massive, bro. As it is for so many people, man. Did you have any difficulties integrating back into society after doing time in prison? Yeah, bro. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I did three years straight. My, it was my first ever prison sentence. So three years straight is like a decent one for your first time in. And like, I remember getting home. Like, I remember how excited I was to get home, bro. Like when I found out I got parole and that. But then when I got home, bro, like it was like, it was weird, bro. Like I just didn't, I, I felt like outcast, you know? And like I'm walking around like coals and shit and like, you know, it's just too many people, bro, you know? And I'm like looking out to see like if cunts are going to kick off and I'm trying to tell myself like, bro, like you're not in jail anymore, you know? It even got to the point, bro, where I missed jail. Like the first month after I got back, like I just missed, because that's what I became used to, bro. You know what I mean? Like institutionalisation, like... Any, 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 any cunt that's done a big stint will tell you, bro, like you do become institutionalised, you know? Used to fucking waking up at this time every morning, used to being told what to do. And um, the thing with jail too, lad, is that you don't have any responsibility. Like you do, like within yourself as a human being, you have the responsibility to try and better yourself while you've got the time to do it. But it's not like you've got to get up every morning and go to a job or you've got fucking bills to pay. So getting out bro and it was like all of a sudden like straight off the bat 
so I got paroled to my mum's joint. And, um, but straight off the bat, mum's like, you're paying rent, you know what I mean? You're doing this, which I'm fine with, bro. Of course, I want to chip in, but it was like all of a sudden, bro, I was like, fuck, you know, like, it, it was a lot of weight, bro, you know? A lot of weight to succeed and a lot of weight to, like, do the right thing, you know? Um, yeah, so probably for about three or four months, bro, like, I was fucking, I was missing it in jail, bro. And I still, like, most nights, bro, like, it's crazy, bro, like, most nights... I still dream about jail. Like maybe, so five nights out of the week, my dreams are all, I'm in jail in my dreams. And I've been out for 21 months now, but it's like I'm still in there, bruh, because every night when I go to bed, I'm back in the unit, bruh. I'm back in the pod, you know what I mean? Or fucking, I'm getting, like, something's happening, but it's always in jail, you know? I have heaps of dreams lately, bro, where, like, I'm... I'm I'm in jail, but I've escaped, and then I know like I'm going to be in so much trouble. Like I'm I'm on, I'm on the outside world, but I know I'm not supposed to be there. I'm like fuck. I need to get back to jail. I need to sneak back in before I get caught. Um, so just stuff like that, bro. You know, it was hard to to integrate back into society, bro. And you know, especially like the first job I had. You know, I had to tell my boss like, look, I'm out on parole. I've got to go to meetings every week, and it's just you, you feel judged, bro. Like I had a GPS tracker on my ankle, and yeah, like it's not a nice feeling, bro. You know. Um, you're trying to get like yourself back on track and, and integrate into society, but you know deep down, well, especially when you've got the GPS tracker on your on your ankle, like, you know, bro, like I'm walking through Woolies and that and like mums are pulling their kids to the sides and that because they don't know what it is, bro, you know what I mean? They just know like it's not good, so you definitely feel a lot of judgment, bro, which is hard first coming out, you know, especially when you're trying to make a fresh start and, and better yourself, man. Positive lessons that I learn in jail, bro, well, to start, bro, for the first time in my life, I had time to really be with myself and figure out who I was, bro. You know what I mean? So for, for so many years before I went to jail, like, I was doing things for other people or, like, how are they going to perceive me and, like, sort of, not, not for my image, but, like, you just don't get that time to yourself in, in the real world, you know what I mean? Like, you're working, you're surrounded by people all the time. Like, it wasn't until I went to jail, bro, and I, like, all of a sudden, I just, like, it was just me, especially when, when I went to the slot, you know, um, locked in 23 hours a day, and even when you're let out, it's only in a cage on your own, you know? I really got to, like, know myself, and I started asking myself, like, you know, what do I like, bro? Like, what are, what, what are, what are hobbies that I like, or where are places in the world I want to go? Like, what sort of man do I want to be? What sort of legacy do I want to leave behind? And before jail, bro, I'd never thought about that. You know what I mean? I definitely never thought about, like, what legacy am I going to leave behind? You know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't mean that as in, like, what legacy am I leaving to the broad public, just as to my family, you know? Um, yeah, positive things, bro. Like, I mean, bro, jail's jail, lad. Like, it's like any situation, yeah? Like, you can either look at the negatives... Like, I can sit in jail and be like, fuck, you're yeah, fucking in jail, fuck the cops, fuck this cunt, but bro, how's, that's only going to affect me negatively, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, man, I had so much time to be on my own and, and just figure out, like, what I want in life, you know? It was a blessing, bro, it really was. So obviously I've come out, hit the ground running, bro, you know? Do you regret the actions that put you in prison? Yeah, I've thought about this a lot, man. So like... Obviously, I regret what I did, you know what I mean? Like, I, I regret doing the armed robberies. I regret that there's innocent people out there that I've hurt physically and, emotion and, and mentally. Like, that doesn't make me feel good, you know what I mean? Because I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to think deep down I'm a good person, bro. Like, I've done bad things, but at the root, you know, I'm a good person. So, like, but at the same time, bro, if, like, if I never went to prison, like, I wouldn't be here now, you know? I definitely would... I don't know, bro. I don't know where I'd be, but like it was going to prison that made me realise what I had in my life, what the wrong path I was going down, um, which made me want to change, you know? So I don't know, like, do I regret it? Yes, I regret the people I hurt, but I don't really, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not proud of going to prison, but I'm not ashamed of it either. You know, that was just the circumstances I was in, they were the cards dealt. I wasn't doing armed robberies and kicking down doors because I wanted to or because I was trying to be a sick cunt. I was doing it because I had to, bro, you know what I mean? Um, 
so yeah, bro. No, I do regret like, I do regret it, bro. But it happened, bro, and I made the best of a bad situation and um, tried to take as many positives out of it as I could, man. So now that you're like, you know, sober, like how do you overcome your adversity? You obviously used to do drugs and stuff to overcome it before, but yeah. what, what do you do now? Yeah, so again, it's a hard question, bro, because like as we were speaking about before, like no one teaches you how to deal with grief when you're young. Like no one teaches you how to deal with loss of family members or the loss of, of best friends when they tragically pass away. So like for me, bro, like what makes me get out of bed every day and want to do the right thing? Well, it's my brother Betsy, you know? Like I want to honor his, like, so obviously my brother Betsy took his own life when I was in prison in 2020. Um, he was 24 years old, but that just really made me go, you know what, man, like I really need to get out there and no matter what I go through, bro, like I've got to deal with it as an adult and in a mature way out of respect for him, bro, because he took his own life, you know, and drugs and alcohol played a massive part in that, bro. So like for me, like I don't drink anymore, lad. And like, obviously I'm sober and I just feel like no matter what I go through, if I'm to resort to drugs or alcohol to cope with it, it's disrespecting my brother who's passed away. And, you know, I love him so much, bro. So I just keep him in my mind. And not just him, my family too, you know, my mum, uh, my younger brother, you know, like I just think of them, bro. And I think of the pain that my drug use and going to prison and the life I lived caused them. I don't know, bro, I just love them so much, bro. Like, um, yeah, I just don't want to hurt them like that again, bro. So I'd rather sit in my room and just cry, bro, and cry and cry and deal with the grief and pain than then go and get on, you know? Because I know at the end of the day, if I go and get on, it's only gonna make me feel even shitter about myself, which in turn will probably lead to more drug use, you know, to try and deal with the shame. You know, so it's hard, like, you know, sometimes people ask for advice, bro, like, you know, how, how do you stay so strong? How do you deal with it? And it's like, bro, I don't even know how I deal with it. You know what I mean? There's no blueprint, lad, you know? Like, I just get up every morning, I look at the photo of my brother Betsy on my bedside table, I look at the photo of me and my brother, I look at the photo of my mum, and I just go, like, that motivates me, you know? But again, everyone's different. Like, like some people don't have family in their life that motivate, like, they, that's gonna motivate them to wanna do good. So everyone's different, bruh, but, you know, that's my story, that's what motivates me. And I just know, bruh, like, you know, I can't go back to doing what I used to do to cope with trauma and loss, you know? Because that's just gonna make it worse. And yeah, I'll never disrespect my brother's name, you know? I'm out here trying to live my best life and be the best human being I can be, not just for myself and my family, but for everyone, bro. Like, I'm trying to be a good human being on this planet, lad. And, um, yeah, I just look at my bro Betsy cars every morning and, and that, gives, that gives me the strength, you know? Do you want to tell me what music means to you? Ever since coming out of jail and reaching, like, the level of fame, if you want to call it, um, bro, like, having... I've never really understood like the responsibility I have as an artist until, you know, the last sort of nine months, you know, and that's because before I went to jail, I wasn't on social media, so I wasn't getting messages from fans and stuff like that. But obviously since coming out, I've been on social media and the amount of messages that I get, bro, saying, excuse me, saying um, like my music's changed their lives or literally saved their lives. And, you know, obviously they give me their rundown of their story and that and you know, so music for me, what it means to me now is like, it's, it's not what it means to me for myself. It's like what it means that I can do and the change and effects it has on so many other people. You know what I mean? So I know that as an artist, bro, like I do have a, we, like as any artist, we've got responsibilities, lad. Like there's people, you know, that listen to our music and, and it influences them, bro, you know? And, um, I know that more than ever, bro. So like the fact that I was telling, I was telling Bagsy not long ago, bro, like maybe yesterday at, at the Melbourne show, I did the meet and greets. And this one fan, bro, he, he come to the meet and greet and he had a learning disability. And, um, you know, he was, he started crying, bro. And I just, I just hugged him, bro. And, and he goes, I love you, bro. And I said, I love you too, bro. You know, like he goes, you don't know how much you mean to me. And I said, bro, like you don't know how much you mean to me. You know what I mean? Like that, like the fact that you've paid money to come and see me, bro, like, and share your story with me means so much, you know? Um, so as I was saying before, bro, like obviously music's therapeutic. It's good to get stuff off my chest. And it's good to have fun too and make a bit of money off it. But 
at the end of the day, bro, like knowing that people listen to my music and don't feel so alone or as alone, like that means everything to me, bro. And that, that honestly is like the main reason that I'm doing it right now, bro. You know what I mean? And what sort of advice do you have for the youth maybe that have, you know, going through what you've gone through in the past? What sort of advice do you have for them? Bro, it's, it's like there's so much advice I could give, you know what I mean? And it's, you know the saying, bro, you can't put an old head on young shoulders. So like, obviously I'm at where I'm at now because of what I've been through and, and, and my age and stuff like that. But, you know, if I could tell like the young cunts, bro, like it'd just be like, the biggest thing is just be like to be yourself, you know, like we spend so many years, like when we're young, trying to fit in and trying to please other people which you never can, bro, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, like, we, we dress, you know, we dress to please people that we don't even know, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's such, like, life's so short, bro. Life is honestly so short. And, like, you can't spend any time wasting it, caring about what other people think, especially strangers, you know what I mean? Like, all these people on Instagram, like, all these followers, like, bro, like, I just want to tell these kids, you know, like, just be yourself, you know what I mean? Don't go live a life that you think you have to live to look good in other people's eyes, you know? You know, I was telling, telling one of the younger boys the other day, he's like, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And I, I could tell like it was influenced on like music he's been listening to. And I said, brother, I'm like, what you need to do is, is you need to go down to the park or go down by the water, leave your phone at home and just really sit there for an hour and ask yourself, bro, like, what do I want? Like, what do I wanna, what do I wanna wear? Like, what do I wanna do? Like, what hobbies, interests me like you know what I mean like start thinking these questions without thinking like what about what are people going to think bro you know what I mean um because yeah bro you've seen how detrimental trying to live up to an image has been on the youth bro like everyone's stabbing each other bro over what lad you know what I mean like I get some beef is 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 justified bro you know like if someone's hurt your family member like obviously you've got to ride out and do something you know well, you don't have to bro but you know, all this senseless violence, lad, you know, all because of people trying to look hard for everybody else. When you go to jail for 10, 15 years, whatever, bro, like, these people you were trying to impress and put this image on for, like, mean nothing, bro. Like, they're not there, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, bro, I, I just wish every, like, you know, just for kids to be themselves, bro, and just take the time to find out who they are, bro, and, and not try to impress the whole world, bro, because end of the day none of that matters man are you doing anything for like in, with kids are you working with kids are you doing anything in the community when i get back on monday i got i got a message from this guy at a recovery center last week and he said that he's got three three teens coming in i think 18 19 and they've just lost a best mate to suicide and he goes flows you know bro like these kids love your music would you be able to come to the recovery center and, and we're gonna have some pizza and play some games and, and maybe just share your experience, bro. And like, I was talking to my missus about it, bro. Like, I feel like, cause I've been doing like labor and work, carpentry, landscaping my whole life, you know, just like shovel in my hands, pushing wheelbarrows, you know? And it was like, for the first time I go like, you know what, like, like I'd honestly like to do something more meaningful, bro, you know? Um, so bro, I'm so, like, I feel so humbled that they've invited me to come speak to these kids, man. And, and I really hope that I can go there, man, and, and share my experiences and, and, and maybe, you know, help them change their lives for the better, bro. But yeah, I'm going to speak to old matey about, um, like, if he's got any jobs available and try to get my foot in the door, man. Because like, as soon as I got that invite, like, I didn't even have to think twice about it, bro. You know, like, oh, should I go, this and that. I was like, oh, these kids need help about their best mate committing suicide, I'm there. Like, how can I help, bro? You know what I mean? Like, I, I honestly want to help, you know? So, I haven't done too much. Obviously, I've only been out of jail 20 months. I've been on parole this whole time. I've been on strict conditions, but now I'm off parole, bro. I'm starting to think, yeah, you know, like, not with just through my music, but how can I help? Like, what advice, like, what can I do to help, you know, these younger kids that have been through what I've been through? Like, because man, I, I know for a fact, bro, like I never had any good role models or influences in my life growing up. You know, like all the older boys were doing crime and doing drugs and stuff. And like, I always used to think like, 
imagine if I had a positive role model, male role model in my life growing up as a kid, like where my life may have gone. Um, so yeah, man, I, you know, ever since I got that invite there, bro, I've, it's made me think, bro, I really want to do more, you know? And I definitely will, bro. Like, I'll make it my mission to um, try and help out as many people as I can, and hopefully in a professional way, and, and get, you know, it'd be cool to make that, make money off it and make a living from it, bro, but yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting these kids on Monday, bro, and yeah, maybe helping them out, you know? It's gonna be good, bro. Kind of already spoke about what's in store in the future is that, but was there anything else? Like, obviously the music, yeah, bro. So, yeah, obviously I'm looking at, into getting into youth work. Um, as far as music goes, bro, like, I've never felt this positive about music, you know. I've actually, like, I'm sitting down at the moment and I'm taking it, I'm looking at it not just sort of as like a career, you know. So I've got big plans for next year, bro. Me and Bagsy, like, we've had a hectic year. It's been massive, bro. We've done, like, 10, 10 clips or something. Um, and we're just looking to level up next year, bro. As far as music is concerned, um, I'm dropping my, my new album, Loyal to the Soil, at some stage. Uh, I've got a show in Brisbane, January 28th, so I'm starting the, the year off with a headliner show in Brisbane. So yeah, as far as music goes, bro, we're just trying to keep the ball rolling. Uh, as far as my personal life goes, man, like I'm just on a bit of a, I'm on like a spiritual journey, you know? I wanna, you know, I abused my body and, and my mind for so many years, bro. And it's now that I realize like, we are our own best friends or worst enemy, you know? Our body's a temple, mind's a palace. So I'm just trying to live a life and do as much as I can to, you know, take care of my body, bro, and take care of my mind. And you know, like I've never been overseas, bro. Like I, I'm, I plan to travel to Italy next year and do some traveling, bro. Cause like, I've never really left the hood, bro. You know what I mean? Like I've been to Queensland and, and, and shit, but yeah, man, it's time to get out and live life. You know what I mean? Because when you sit around in the trap for 10 plus years, bro, you don't really see beyond that. Where now that I've been sober for five years, bro, it's like I'm seeing all these horizons, bro, you know? Uh, so yeah, man, 2023 is gonna be a big one as far as music goes and in my personal life, bro, you know? But I'm just trying to be a good human being, bro. Like I've, I've got a line in one of my songs, it's like, um, I believe karma comes back on the ones that you love. So I try to be kind and treat people the same way I want them to treat my mum. Like, honestly, bro, like, I'm, tr I'm just trying to be kind, bro. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, like, bring joy to people's lives and, and, and advice and just, um, and, and my own life too, bro, you know? Um, I'm really, you know, I still have that side of me, bro, that, as I said, once an addict, always an addict. I still have thoughts about using drugs and going out and, and doing an urn and shit, but... That's like, it's not as strong as it used to be, bro. Like, so I feel like soon, like, that'll be near completely gone. And yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see where the future takes on my spiritual journey, bro. And, and my journey in music as well. I know it's gonna be a big one.